Golfer. Golfers, what's going on? Welcome back to the podcast dedicated to helping you play your best golf, chase your best. My name is Tim Connor, and I am your host. All I do is teach golf every day. I've been in the trenches for a long time, and uh, I want to pass along the stuff I get to see, do, be a part of, and learn with you. Is it a legacy thing? I don't. I don't think it's a legacy thing. I think it's more of like I've just spent so much time doing this that I want people to not have to go through the same things I've gone through, not have to take the same lumps I've taken. You can uh, significantly speed up your learning curve by having good information in your hands and your fingertips. I have always been, we'll have just a little honest moment here. I have always been kind of nervous to put my podcast on YouTube. I was okay for a long time doing it off of YouTube and I Maybe because it wasn't recorded on video or whatever, it felt less real. But when you have put so much time and energy and effort into your craft, it's like, it's intimidating to put it out to the world to just judge you openly, judge you for good or for bad or for whatever. Uh, It's there, it lives, it breathes for you to see now. So if you're listening to this, the podcast is live on YouTube. Also for today's episode, I'm going to have some demonstrations for you some visuals to go along with it because I think it's important that we break it down a little bit. And I'll do, as always, if you listen to audio, I'll do my best to explain with my words. But uh, welcome back. It's great to to have you here for another podcast. This podcast is and always will be dedicated to the golf learning curve. Today, I want to talk about why, <laughs> frankly, why your speed and tempo sucks. Why it's not where you want it to be. Tempo is a very confusing word, friends. In golf, I think it gets thrown around as much as, well, as much as a lot of other stuff. Like, it's a buzzword. I think people say it and they don't actually know what they're talking about a lot of times. I don't think a lot of people have tempo defined. Now, what tempo is to me is it's all of the pieces of your golf swing working in unison. Your body, your arms, the club working together in unison. There are a lot of good players that play golf with different tempo. Okay, let's go through some examples. Freddie Couples, Annika Sorenstam, Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy. Think about those for a second. Stew on them for a second. Think about those swing styles and what they might look like or how they might be different. Freddie Couples and Tiger Woods on the tee box. Their swings certainly aren't the same. They're different. Their tempo is significantly different. How they swing the club... There are similarities, but there's a lot of differences as far as tempo goes. There's players that play with more syrupy Freddie Couples tempo, and there's players, Annika Sorenstam, another example of syrupy, um, buttery, uh, all that stuff. Tiger Woods really kind of smashes at it. Rory McIlroy, same thing, smashes at it. Bryson DeChambeau smashes at it. It doesn't mean they have bad tempo. No, of course not. These are some of the best players in the world. What it means is that different strokes actually work for different folks. How about that? How about that? It works in golf to have different tempos, and there's not a cookie cutter way to swing the golf club. And that's pretty important. That's like a that's like a thing that if you took nothing away from this podcast, you should take that away. Because not all golf swings are built the same. Not all people are programmed the same way. So there's different recipes to bake your chocolate chip cookie and have an award-winning one. Yeah. So what I want to talk about is the similarities, not the differences, the things you can do to embrace your tempo and create speed and um, use your parts efficiently. Now, one quick tidbit on tempo, and not to dive too deep on you, but tempo to me, in that there's different styles that play good golf, the biggest thing I see with tempo is that players that play with syrupy tempo tend to have very relaxed, cool attitudes. It's a personality thing. It's a personality trait, in my opinion. Uh, I think we're, people are wired differently, and those those wires uh, tend to swing differently. Tiger Woods, um, more focused, more intense. Rory McIlroy, Rory McIlroy, focused, intense, not as laid back and cool. Although they are cool, it's just a different kind of personality trait. So your personality, that's a pretty hard thing to change. The person you are is the person you are. So embrace your tempo. 
but also embrace good technique. So everything turning together, that's what good tempo is. It's, uh, it's important. Tempo and speed, those things kind of go together hand in hand because what happens from an efficiency standpoint is if one thing gets out of sequence with another, for example, your arms start, but your body doesn't turn. We've lost efficiency through that system and that efficiency bleeds speed and power. So all of these things are interwoven or connected, like Avatar, right? Everything is interwoven in the golf swing. Every domino affects the next domino. So when you lose speed or lose efficiency, you lose speed. Now, we want everything to turn together in one piece. That means your waist, your chest, your arms, the club, they all turn together. Not one of those systems goes uniquely without the other. In the backswing, I'm referring to particularly. In transition, what we want is we actually want the hips to start a little first and, and everything else will play catch up and we'll get that good rubber band effect and uh, help you generate some more speed. I see so much of tempo going wrong in the backswing, not so much the downswing, so that's going to be mainly our focus today. Now, speed really inter interweaves with that because of the efficiency thing I told you earlier, but also when most people swing to the top of their backswing, many people, I'm going to grab a club really quick. Many people allow their right arm to bend and they lose extension away from their body. They lose the good triangle that we started with, with our arms nice and straight in the beginning. And that just bleeds speed significantly. Now, you've heard the term maybe arc width or width in the golf swing. To me, what that really means, it, it means two things. One, the width of our arms from our chest, how far is that distance? And then what is my club doing as far as leg, angle, hinge, those things? I think arc width, has, those two things work together. But for the purpose of speed today, let's talk mostly about arm width, arc width, arc width, arm width, because this is the thing that I see so many amateurs do wrong. I see so many people get to the top of their swing and their arms are just folded over their back and they've lost sloppy positions and the club face is more open because they've hit bad positions and they've just lost so much uh, structural integrity through the system that they're going to bleed energy and they're also going to bring the club back to the ball very unpredictably because... How are you going to play a good golf from here, right? Can you send me some examples of players that play good golf with their arms folded over their shoulders at the top of their backswing? It doesn't really happen. We've seen players play good golf with long backswings, but they're not losing as much structural integrity as uh, an amateur would. Specifically, you could think of like a John Daly. John Daly, long long, wide swing, right elbow flaring, he still has some width as far as the distance away from his chest. He's not allowing his hands to get close to his chest and relax. So there's a difference there, and that's a really key takeaway. We want width. Width is a really good thing when it comes to accumulating distance and speed. Now, to circle back with this tempo thing, many players get pieces out of, out of, out of sync. So to build that, to build good tempo, to build good habits, what we want is we want everything turning nice and together, all right? And to do that, often what I'll have players do is kind of lock in their arms in that nice straight position when they're starting and just practice turning by turning their hips. And the reason I say your hips, or I also might say your stomach or your belly, is because that's at the very center of the golf swing, that is your, the center of your galaxy, and everything orbits around that. So we want that to be the thing, the gear that starts the, the backswing, that starts everything turning together. Eventually, pieces will separate a little bit, but in your backswing, you're really setting yourself up for success if you can get everything turning together in one piece. I kind of like the term, term one piece takeaway. I kind of don't like it. I think for instructive purposes and simplifying how we talk to each other, I think the term one piece takeaway, I can get behind that because truly when we take the club away and if everything turns together in one piece, we've set ourselves up to have great tempo. Now, part of that one piece takeaway 
is not hinging the wrist too early. A lot of players are way too quick to hinge their wrists when the hitch, the wrists should hinge much later in the backswing and they should hinge as a product of momentum and gravity, not because you're setting your wrists. Now I'll say also that this could be different for some players. There are some players who hinge their wrists early and play good golf, but their, their body, their belly, everything is still turning together. There are disadvantages to hinging earlier and hinging later with your wrists. If you're really someone who's looking to build speed, we want to hinge later for sure. What we're really looking for with most professional swings is we're looking for the arms to be straight and the club to be hinged by the time your lead arm or for a right-handed player, your left arm gets to be about parallel to the ground. That's the deal that is when we want the club to be hinged by. So to take away from this episode, have great tempo by turning everything together to start your backswing. That sets you up for success. Keep great width from your arms to your chest. Keep your arms away from your body. Very, very important. Having structural integrity through that system is very, very important. Um, don't swing so far that your arms have to break down. As long as you're turned fully, which is about 90 degrees with the, with the shoulders or the chest, you don't need to swing back any further. You don't need to swing back any further. You swung back far enough. Um, have great tempo. Have great width. Those things are separators. Those I would consider those to be key, key between key separators between amateurs and professionals. And uh, we want to play golf more like the pros do. They're the examples of what the best do, and um, we want to learn from the best. That's a good thing to do. Success leaves behind clues. Anyway, let me know what you thought about this podcast. Let me know what's on your mind. The kind of things that have been stirring up there. The kind of golf questions that haven't been answered, I need to know what you don't know. That's kind of how I get part of my content is just listening to all of you. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're listening wherever, go check it out on YouTube. It's, um, it's a great resource. And uh, we'll catch you back here same time, same place next week. He's crazy.